Good morning. Welcome to the Early Morning Scoop. You are listening to the Early Morning Scoop. Yes, uh, this is Eagle FM. And uh, yes, this is your number one radio station. My name is Kelvin. Just as we were advertising on our social media pages, we do have uh, uh, the presence of his worship, the mayor for the city of Vinduk, that is a job and panda right here in the studio with us. And we want to take him right within the core of his mind. What kind of a mayor do we have this time around? For the first time in 30 years, we have a radically minded mayor. What does that mean for the city of Windhoek? His worship, welcome to the early morning scoop and thank you so much for coming through. Thank you very much, Kevin, and good morning to you and your listeners, all the residents of the capital city. That's right. That is your speech there that you delivered uh, when you came to the helm as the mayor for the city of Windhoek. And you are questioning the status quo, uh, which has been the normal that we have gotten accustomed to for the past 30 years. The question out there is, do you have the clout to actually implement the ideas where I'm sure you're talking about localization and not to be exporting our jobs outside and uh, putting the money outside? Do you have the clout to make sure that that which you are saying in your speech, you're able to deliver on the ground? Absolutely. I think uh, we, we need to be able to understand two things. One is that we were already in charge before being in charge. Uh, we are a generation of young men and women with talent and energy who made a president of the country to sit down and sign an agreement with 21-year-old, with 22-year-old, 23-year-old on the direction of the country as far as housing is concerned. We are the men and women who mobilize society and say that land cannot just be uh, placed at the periphery. When people were scared, when it wasn't fashionable to do so, we are a generation of young men and women who indeed place the land question and the housing question and the fight against corruption at the center of uh, national and public discourse. What does it, it goes to say? It says that we have been in charge already uh, without being in charge. In fact, our, our conceptualization and understanding of what is happening here is that this election is a fourth side of, uh, is, a, is a fifth side of struggle. We have been fighting in the streets. We have been fighting in the courts. We have been fighting in public discourse. We have been fighting through strategic engagement. We then decided uh, towards the end of last year to add the fifth sides of struggle, which is election. So election this does not become a beginning of anything. It becomes a continuation of our struggle, the struggle for ensuring that the dejected masses of our people are no longer treated as if they have leprosy, to the struggle to ensure that the incomplete project of liberation is brought to its logical uh, conclusion, the struggle which is opposed ag against the, the capitalist uh, order that is obviously implemented uh, through neoliberalism and all these other uh, liberal uh, notions as far as the economic question is concerned. Of course, coming to the specific speech that I, I make when I was just giving an orientation, that was mere introduction. It was a mere orientation uh, in terms of the direction that we as a city uh, would be taking. In fact, if you read section 11, of the local authority act section 11 subsection 5 of the local authority act says that the we are the mayor uh, it specifically says that the mayor is tasked with the responsibility of formulating policy that are going to lead to dealing with the problems of unemployment in our country so it is indeed provided for in the local authority act and i'm empowered so by the time i was speaking i know exactly what i'm talking about and also the empowerment that i'm given by this instrument called the Local Authority Act to work with the collective, of course, but to lead and initiate and formulate policies uh, that, that are of developmental uh, in, in nature. So that was a mere orientation in terms of giving a direction in terms of what is it that, that should happen. I would be having an annual mayoral address uh, Monday um, next week to be able to give direction on key policy intervention uh, particularly the low-hanging fruits, and and also to give a message of, you know, towards to send our our residents towards the new year. What is it that we expect of them as residents and things like that? So we are absolutely uh, clear. We have been in charge, and we are in charge, and we are going to be in charge. Right. So let's talk about uh, the uh, political entanglement that exists between the affirmative repositioning and uh, the IPC. 
IPC is a political party who's uh, coming to the helm, was also supported by the propertied class of, of Vindok, uh, talking about Vindok West, talking about the white population. How do you reconcile? And uh, I'm, if you can just uh, uh, demystify the convergent point, the convergence point where you meet, where you are coming from a very radical black conscious background, and this party is actually being supported by the propertied class uh, that <coughs> represent the um, uh, generation of the past or that actually benefited from the past uh, white colonial establishment. How do you how do you converge? I think uh, there's, a, there's a huge misconception here. Uh, SWAPO is a liberation movement. Right. But SWAPO is the one that is responsible and supervises the, and supervises the, the capitalist order that is, uh, has been very problematic to, to the masses of our people. This is what we need to make absolutely clear. The residents of the city, those that you need to remember that the, the political dynamics here, you have about 400,000 residents in this city. Out of those 400,000 residents, only 150,000 registered to go and vote. Right. Out of those, uh, uh, and, uh, out of those 150 residents that registered to vote, only between 59 and 60,000 of them actually turned up to go and vote. 20,000 of them voted for Southwest Africa, 14,000 of them voted for uh, Independent Patriot for Change, 8,000 of them voted for the AR movement, about 7,000 of them voted for 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 the LPM, about 5,000 of them voted for PDM, and it continues, continues like that. So, but what is the, the, the outcome of the election? It's what in political science we call the balance of forces. So the balance of forces is such that there is nobody who was able to garner 50 plus 1, in other words, 50, 51% of the vote. Right. So what then should happen is that the situation was created now in the capital city for the first time after 30 years of flag independence. The situation was then created that to constitute the governance of the city, to be able to constitute governance and to provide leadership in the direction at the policy level, Right. you now needed entities that are inside there to be able to come together. So the coalition is not, uh, the coalition is not, uh, it is not uh, something that is uh, brought about because of ideological consideration. It is brought, brought about by a mathematical reality as it relates to the balance of forces. Right, but, so when you are comes, forced, but when it comes to you working together, no, no, definitely no. I, I are working to, within the context of I want, different ideologies. That I want, are no, I want first to take you through right. before we... Because you see, people are putting the, 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 the horse before the... What the is cut. it? The cart before the horse. Right. So I want to take you through to explain to you that what it means mathematically. Right. The mathematics must make sense. So a 50 plus 1 must be constituted. Right. So whoever is able to... So what is at, at the table, first of all, is to constitute the leadership. Right. Is to constitute the leadership as a first phase because the leadership must be constituted. So when the leadership has been constituted, uh, and then you you then come to aspect of policy and other things. Right. What is that? What has not happened, and it's going to have happened to give you an indication. It's going to happen next week Monday. What has not uh, happened is that there has been no indication of what 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 is a direction. Uh, until now. Uh, until now, what is the direction of policy? So it, it will be very, very superficial and artificial to engage in ideological debates on this formation. Because remember, the, what, the, what this coalition uh, explains to you is unity in diversity. So as, as, as we are calling ourselves progressive forces, as parties, as formations, as associations and entities who are part of the progressive forces, we, we, we definitely understand that we are... We are there as diverse. In other words, we're calling ourselves unity in diversity. So we are diverse. We are from different background and orientation, but we are forming the unit. So the fundamental question is, that what is it that is bringing us together? All right. Now, I understand there. But you see, the problem is, the problem with ideology is that fundamentally it is the basis upon which you implement and manifest your competence and execution. Absolutely. I, I'm talking, uh, looking at the fact that still in front of your office, you do have that uh, colonial statue. And it's a statue that for a long time you have really abode. It's a, it's a statue that you've held with disgust. Absolutely. And when you came to power, 
people said the days of the statue are over mm. but you are also working with a political party that was also voted for by people who'd rather say we want to keep the statue how do you see yourself as an activist mayor executing these radical policies that you have when you're dealing with people that are fundamentally di differentiated from your spies ideology is concerned yes maybe you have to forgive me because as a political scientist and as a teacher as right. a lecturer i always want to make sure that i i, I take everybody else uh, through all right so what i'm trying to make a, a, a distinction there is no dichotomy absolutely not dichotomy as far as uh, this matter is concerned right what we are dealing with in the first phase is the constitution of the leadership in right. line with the with the 50 plus one aspect so that debate that you are t now talking about what is going to happen it is what i invite you as journalists as society as a residents to, to to be alive to because you see winduk is going to be very exciting now so i don't want i don't understand there is no basis of us to engage uh at this stage because we have not seen there was never a single council meeting all right. to, to be able to see what are those matters that have been tabled. What is the polit policy direction of the mayor? What is, in fact, uh, you, you must remember that everybody else, including the air movement, understand and accept that we are now working in this collective called the Progressive Forces. Now, uh, that understanding, and when you go in, in, into this, somebody was saying, no, it's a marriage without, uh, it's, it's a marriage without love. Right. So assuming it's, it's really a marriage without love, you must be able to understand that Yes, it's a marriage without love, but if that marriage without love is in community of properties, you don't go and sell the house just because you are, you are in a marriage without love. Because you will be required by the instrument of the marriage, which is that contractual, it's called antinatural contract, the ANC. Right. It's going to require of you to understand and get the views and consent of the other party that is in the in, in that aspect so i want really uh, you as journalist and because if we start engaging uh kevin this is my fear right if we start engaging into ideological debate now when we have not seen policy pronouncement and and, and direction uh, we are going to lose sight because imagine we're going to debate now and exhaust that aspect but when we now need journalists and everybody else to pay particular attention to policy debates inside the chambers and those councils. So we are, we are kind of, uh, how do I say, somebody put up lights of, of Christmas lights in July. All right. So and in then, other words, and then, it's a preemptive strike. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about um, the political pressure that's coming from the Landless People's, People's Movement. In a very political, cunning way, mm. you elbowed out LPM because they, they differed with you as far as how the, um, the, the, the leadership should, should be constituted. So they are not part of the management committee. But then here comes Bernardo Swadboy putting pressure to say that we are for urban uh, uh, land grabbing. And you have been an advocate for grabbing of land, most importantly for the landless. You led a contingent of dozens of young people to go and stake out land in very affluent areas. Do you see LPM putting pressure on you to implement this policy or to implement this particular action that you've been advocating for? And, and is it practical for you to do as a mayor now? Look, the, le, let's, let's be absolutely clear about certain things. If, there's, if the masses of our people are going to protest to the office of a president or to a minister of, of whatever, right. you are going to see the mayor protesting. Let's get that absolutely clear. If there's going to be a protest against corruption in Okahanja and our people need me to reinforce, I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to change. Absolutely not. I'm not going to change as a person. We are here to perform a particular uh, function. So I just wanted to get that uh, absolutely clear uh, out of the way. Now, the, the, the aspect of uh, the LPM, I think it's really a smoke in a, in a cup, of, cup of tea. Uh, because there's a lot of assumptions. Because remember, in any negotiated environment, uh, because by the very nature of negotiation, political negotiation in particular, right. uh, they happen in closed doors. Right. They, they don't happen on, on TV. They don't happen at the stadium. Be because people are not inside the room. They are not at the table, at the negotiation table. They are bound to make assumptions. Uh, and and I have not really seen. I've seen two types of interviews. For instance, there was that interview by Jemima Bukes uh, when uh, the, the 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 LPM leadership was talking about what. Is, in fact, the, the the leader of the LPM was saying uh, the ER movement have proposed useful policy proposals that they agree with. 
you understand right. so so sometimes people read the gestures and the and the facial expression and the movement of the arms and the legs and things like that of course those are very important indicators in politics but are they substantive i would argue not so i don't see a, a major crisis with the lpm uh, and i think there is a lot of policy convergence with the lpm i don't foresee a crisis uh, let's not project the LPM as uh, people who are not going to be working together. They, they are making a contribution. We've been having a lot of uh, onboarding and induction programs, and the councillors of the LPM are making significant contribution in those uh, discussions. So uh, uh, we would want to make a decision, political decision and political calculation on scientific basis and on basis of political astuteness. Because if you make political arguments and, and calculation uh, because you don't know who's communicating with who because you might see a headline or a post on social media and things like that and then you might make a conclusion because remember we are serious uh, players some of us are political scientists so we understand these dynamics so it, there is no crisis what i'm to answer your question in short there is no crisis as far as uh, the 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 lpm is concerned of course you're asking about what is it that uh, uh, you you we should resist the temptation of projecting our people as anarchic, as, as, as you know. There was no hope to the masses of, of the Namibian people. There was no hope that, that freedom is going to come. There was no hope that housing is going to be sorted. We are now there and we are giving hope and direction to our people. Of course, we do know that Southwest Africa and others are instigating people to do whatever it is. that I'm not responsible for that. But what I know is that majority of the residents of Windhoek have, have, have hope and determination. And, and they know very well that. You see, the reason why people were occupying land is because the political elite was giving land to themselves. All right, so talking about land, the, the first time that we had a conversation, for the first time with you, Job, you had appeared in Who is Who, mm -hmm. uh, where you're being described as a port starer, and uh, you, were, you were actually in the pages of that particular book, brushing shoulders with uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, corporate elites of, 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 of Namibia. You told me that you find inspiration from Robert Mugabe from as far as agrarian reform is concerned. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about town land. Is your policy as the mayor, forget what the IPC will put on the table. Are you going to be embarking on fast track land distribution here in the city of Windhoek? Is land going to be for free? We have a, a clear uh, a clear outlook and understanding of the housing crisis. Right. And we take a scientific approach to it because we, we are talking about, we are in fact, since we came in, we are studying, you must remember the land exists at two levels. Land exists at the, the spiritual and philosophical level. In right. other words, you are born from the land and you go back to the land. Right. Land also exists in terms of common narrative and common uh, expression in terms of that I need to have land to build my home. But land also exists at the technical level. Yeah. So we have an, an appreciation and understanding of land at the f philosophical and spiritual level. We have an understanding and appreciation of land from the common narrative and the common perception and common affinity to the land question of an average man on the street. But what we what has happened now? We have now entered an arena of land for, from a technical level. What what do we mean? For instance, the the, the migration rate here uh, in the city of Windhoek, uh, for instance, in Windhoek as a capital city or the Commerce region rather, is about nine percent. Is the highest growth rate right. in the whole country. We also have an understanding that the housing backlog uh, in Namibia is about 300,000 and ab about more than close to 200,000 uh, residents of, 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 of the city of Windhoek right. are living in the informal settlement. So what we are doing, we are taking a methodical, scientific uh, and technical approach to the land question. We are, for example, uh, laying down the process and say, land delivery, in order to deliver a plot, what, what should actually happen? Okay, you need to get the town, uh, your town planners to town township establishment and all those processes and things like that. So we're trying to say, okay, if NAMPAB and township board, which are structures and processes that approve a development of a township, because remember, land delivery first begin at the computer. Somebody looking at the map and, and checking what is it that need to be delivered. So one of the things that we're basically trying to do as a scientific approach to the land question in the technical uh, places that we're doing, we are studying that timeline and say, but what is it that we can do to, re to, to make sure that land servicing it happens faster? And, and there are already some indicators that we are getting. For instance, some indicators are such that uh, uh, some indicators are such that uh, the, 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 you, you would need the actual servicing of land. 
if you are able to build internal capacity and do the servicing yourself, the prices are going to reduce probably between 20 and 30%. Oh, so talking about prices, you're saying that after all, land will not be for free. Uh, well, look, the, the, we, are, we are going to have to take a... a, a for example, remember when you, are in, in, when you are in leadership right? and you take policy position, your decisions are up for review because the city of Windhoek is an administrative body. So it's subject to Article 18 of the Namibian Constitution. So when we take decisions, we will have to take decisions very carefully and tactfully. Because remember, if I say Kelvin is just a journalist who is dedicated to access to information, so he let him get free land. The child of, uh, of, of Sven Time, the MD of uh, Oltava and List, would then stand up and say, Kelvin is actually my same age. We were born in the same year, in the same month, in the same day. And uh, I also want to a free land just like uh, like, like 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 Kevin. So right. what we are very clear about is that we will have to 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 understand the demographics of our society. We have to understand the social and class dynamics of our country. For instance, we have, we must be able to say we are doing this intervention and this this intervention is for the elderly. In other words, the unemployed elderly because if you say for instance um, the the problem with the binary approach, yeah? The problem with the binary approach uh, to things is that, for example, you would make a decision and say, we are having this discussion, this decision made for the benefit of the elderly. So what, who are the elderly? People who are 60 plus. Okay. Now, what happens to Hegain Kopp, who is a president? He's going to come and make a claim as an elderly. But but he's a president. Alpa Indongo would come and make a claim as an elderly. So this is a, so you have to be tactful and, and say, when you consider class dynamics, and all those other aspects that, that needs proper interventions. You need to be very astute and technical about it. That's why we're saying we, 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 are, we, we are from already, from that orientation, in terms of understanding, land from a spiritual and philosophical level, land from a common narrative and common affinity of the average man. We are now dealing with land from a technical level so that we are able to say, what are the bottlenecks? What is it that we are going to be able to do? Of course, you are, you, you are looking for a specific answer to right. a specific question. Indeed. And the specific answer is that we will not have a uniform approach to dealing with the land question, for instance. Uh, you would see, for instance, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people who come uh, to the city and then they apply for, for land in order for them to develop and build and they give a city maybe just two or three million. We are going to move to a stage where we are saying that why must we just get money now and use the money and tomorrow we don't have money. So we're going to start moving in an area of saying that no, because we need to make sure that by 2041, there's going to be about 800,000. So we must be concerned about the revenue basis and the revenue stream for the city. We must be concerned and say, okay, now this land, we're going to, uh, the land that, the price of the land that we're going to sell you as Kelvin in order for you to build a mall in Havana, right. the price of land is 5 million. So what we're going to do is that our condition for selling this land to you is that we want 30% of the project which is going to account for 2.5 million and you give us the other 2.5 million so that when you continue to make money the city also makes money the current framework is 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 is, is a framework where you the city just get money and then plug the holes and then tomorrow new holes and merges and there's no basis again there's no resources there's no stream for you to plug to to plug the new holes that are going to to be emerging so we're going to take a scientific approach we're not going to have a u a uniform approach there will be instances where we will need to help the poor of the poorest there will be instances where we need to have incentives even to big businesses in order for them to to help the poor. So we are not going to have a uniform approach to, uh, to the land question. We are All going right. to take a technical, methodical, and 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 and, and tactful approach to, to to land delivery. How do you intend to deal with energy, for instance, that has been accused and that that has been slammed for quite a long time? And you, at some point, were even slamming en energy for making use of second party uh, to in, in the whole building of 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 of, of, of um, uh, infrastructure here in the country. I, I don't see that we, we have no... Uh, I know there have been some relations uh, with the energy. Right. I, I don't immediately visualize myself concerning myself with the energy mm. because what we want to do in line with... Six, I think it's Section 58 of the Local Authority Act is to establish a housing fund and a housing scheme. And we do know already that there has been some work that, that already some of the colleagues that, that have been doing that we're going to be building. And from the, In other words, we're going to marry the, the vision that we have of housing uh, with the work that has been done there 
and, and, the, and, the, and the powers that we've been given to our local authority by the local authority act in terms of that specific uh, section. So we are going to be building houses. And by, when I say building houses, it means the city. We're going to be doing the things uh, ourselves. So uh, perhaps the NAG, of course, I don't rule out a, a prospect of engagement with anybody that we need to be able to engage with. But of course, uh, 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 if we are able to find each other with the NAG, uh, we will find each other with energy, but we intend to deliver land and housing to our people by any means necessary. And we will we, we have trust and confidence in ourselves and building internal capacity of the city of Windu. All right, so let's talk about uh, your role as mayor. Hmm. At what point does Job and Panda speak as an activist? At, at what point does Job and Panda speak as, as the mayor for the city of Windu? I'm, I'm asking you this question because just a few minutes ago, you shared this uh, social media post where you said the level of corruption in defense is not a joke. Mm. And then you called the defense minister Babyface, Babyface Vilo Abasha transferred more than 200 million Namibian dollars from the Minister of Defense to August 26 illegally without treasure approval. Let me just uh, cancel this. Without treasurer appro approval, and of course, you don't have to guess where the money ended up. Let's fight corruption. Are you speaking as the mayor of the city of Windhoek? Are you speaking as an activist? But 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 uh, first, let's try to understand where 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 in that post that is uh, refers to a minister of defense. There's no way that it, it, it mentioned babyface, uh, Abacha. Babyface made the transfer and 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 uh, I think I don't think our minister of defense is babyface. All oh, right. Okay. All right, so let's talk about you. <laughs> but no, no, let's, let's deal with, with let's deal yeah, with the, let's with, deal with that one, yes. right? So here you are actually pointing, you're actually accusing somebody of corruption here without evidence. Are you speaking as a mayor? Are you speaking as an activist? Look, let me give you an example. Uh, as a political activist, uh, I've been around for quite a while. Right. Uh, in this country, when when I when we pronounce things, we don't pronounce things just because we are bored. Right. We pronounce things because we are concerned and we care deeply about this country. When I pronounced that Saki Shangala is an epitome of corruption in our country, uh, I was sued for 500 million, uh, 500,000. And a lot of people, yeah, he talks too much. He must watch his mouth. He's good. Well done, Saki. They were congratulating him. And and, uh, and I went to, to court, you know, uh, paying lawyers for my salary and things like that. And they were very excited. Nobody came to say, Job, uh, this is a contribution towards that. But when the case was settled, then they said, yeah, why are you settling? So you understand. So I understand generally about uh, how people say. And I think by, by the time, the, the, by now, they must have learned that when we pronounce somebody, when we pronounce something, uh, uh, it's a matter of time before society becomes awake about. Uh, I'm, I'm generally concerned about the conduct of the, the Minister of Defense. Uh, but you, of course, I knew about his exaggerated sense of self-importance. And uh, we, we can't have a situation where somebody thinks that he's an alpha and omega, is above the law, his ministry cannot be audited, and things like that. This is very concerning. Right. He, very... He, he has actually written a scathing uh, opinion piece about you in the Confidante. Mm. He says that um, in seeking to hide or to atone for the sins of his father against the Namibian people, mm. the ambitious Job and Panda has adopted a multi track strategy. First, he has clothed himself in radical revolutionary populist political stances which Lenin would classify as the infantile left. Secondly, he viciously attacks and denigrates others, their contributions to Namibia and their persona. Mm. Thirdly, he seeks to destroy Swapo, which is the antithesis of his late father's political home, the puppet DTA. And finally, he seeks to acquire power, money and status, which he purposes to disdain. Do you think that these are cheap shots coming from the defense minister <laughs> invoking your father? <laughs> Look, uh, I've never seen a child in my life. I've never seen a child who was making an application to God or whoever uh, that I want to be born by Kevin. Right. So children do not apply on, on uh, who their father is. So m my father is alive. Um, he have whatever history it is that... Uh, uh, because, in fact, th that's why they, they want to, to, to lower me to a conversation about my father. I, I don't deny my father. I will never deny uh, my mother. I will never deny my identity i'll never deny uh anybody so you are expecting for example are you saying uh bernard esau's son are you saying bernard esau's son must hell of a sudden go and change uh his surname because the father is esau so so i think it's a very very cheap and weak uh, in fact i was actually laughing about it i mean this is not the first time when they do that because I'm asking, I'm in my debate with, uh, and I, I explained that, look, vid in the article that I wrote, right. uh, I draw parallels to Sania Bacha. 
uh, I draw parallels to Sania Bacha and, and, and argue competently that Sania Bacha and Vilho have the same transition. They develop political ambition and they become minister of defense under generally weakened leaders. Genkop was 85 and he, and, and, and he came lower to 56. So, I mean, I draw clear parallels with evidence and I argue uh, the point that uh, Namibia, we must, this, this Vilho character was once in Nigeria and these were the consequences. And I argue uh, at the intellectual level, I argue in terms of the, of, of, of the parallels. Look, uh, Sania Bacha, for, 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 for instance, when he, in his quest for developing political power, he sent other leaders in the army uh, under the bus. Why is it that that why is it that is important? It's because that this doesn't happen in the army. The army has one of the strongest brotherhoods in the history of uh, of, of, of 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 military uh, operations. So they, they they stand together, they die together, they fight together. But here you see a man immediately in the quest of fighting for his uh, political power. He throw the generals under the bus. But Wilho. Instead of, uh, and, and that's why I laugh about it, he doesn't engage what I'm saying. He doesn't engage the accusation with regards to foreign accounts. He doesn't, he doesn't respond to what I'm talking about. He goes and talks about my father because he knows basically that he can't. But I, 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 I appreciate and, and I'm very happy that he, he engages me and makes, he makes a comparison of Lenin and he acknowledged that uh, I'm engaged in political strategy. So uh, I'm very f do, honored do, do, to. Do, do, do you think the Namibian on the street, uh, with respect to his worship, would really want to see their mayor engaging in personal fights with uh, the political elites of the country, or rather, more writing about the conditions of the proletariat, no, no, that's the conditions what, of the poorest? Of no, the no, poor. no. That's that's what we we need to be able to uh, to do. Right. This is the actual harassment. This is the actual harassment that happens to a lot of people, particularly with activists and people in public power. What is going to happen is that tomorrow they are going to say, no, Job, uh, we don't want a mayor in Evelyn Street. But those young people who are drinking their sorrows and pain, who's going to be with them in the bus? That's why I'm saying that, look, when this fallacy about, uh, <laughs> this fallacy about, uh, uh, yeah, this is what you must do then as a mayor. The young people in the bar need, need a leader. Young people on, on Twitter need a leader. The street kids need, need a leader. Who, who are those people who are dancing in, in, in the bus? Young people who are committing suicide need a leader. So everywhere where a young person is, every tendency that needs to be confronted, young people need somebody. You know, sometimes uh, somebody was saying, yeah, you must not be making too much jokes. Uh, you are making a lot of jokes on Twitter. A uh, mayor, you can't say that. You know, there is young people who call, who called me and say, oh, this made my day. I'm conscious of the fact that there are many young people who are depressed. There are many young people who just want to smile and they are unable to, to smile because the life is, 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 life is difficult. Life is tough. People lost their jobs because of COVID. In one household, the mother, the father, uh, and, and the son all got retrenched. So a positive news, laughter or a humor from, because remember, you are a, I'm a political leader. Young people are looking at me. So chances are that young people are more looking at what I'm posting than what an, another person in the, in the street is posting. So if I can make them laugh, if I can make them dream, if, I'm, if I can make them ex ex excited, that's what I'm going to be able to do. But look, it is, I'm not engaged in a, in a fight. I'm engaged in a political analysis of a conduct of a dangerous guy. And I'm warning Namibians that this character was once in Nigeria with disastrous consequences. So I'm not engaged in some sort of personal, I'm, a, I'm arguing intellectually. This guy, I'm not talking about Vilho's father. I'm not talking about Vilho's brother. I could as well talk about Vilho's uh, business partners. Um, I could as well talk about Helmut Angola, uh, who's Vilho's uh, brother, and I could talk about his record in government. But Helmut Angola has nothing to do with what Vilho, Vilho uh, conduct oh, So you're, you're coming back to say that Vilho is not supposed to be, um, um, I mean, uh, invoking your father. Well, he can, look, intellectual engagement, as let, you say. Look, he can, he can talk about my father. Right. I mean, my, uh, um, my parents, right. including my grandmother, my mother, and everybody, in fact, they used to go to my mother and say, yeah, your, your son, please, your son must turn down, he's going to be killed. This is not the first time when they invoke uh, my parents. And it has been done before. It has been written before in the newspaper. So, in fact, most of the youth are used to this. So he must be able to engage me. And he's not, <laughs> All right. he's not, he's not, <laughs> okay, he's not that, engaging uh, me, Kelvin. He's, right. he's talking about my father. All right. So, so if he is 60, he's probably the same age as my father. They can engage. But 
I'm old. I'm, I'm young enough to be Vilhos, uh, Vilhos, Vilhos son. So I'm probably his son is probably older than me. So what I have achieved, Vilhos will never be able to achieve. All right. Apart from the the certificates that he have on uh, on how to shoot. So so the 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 the, the, the fact that. A minister of defense. The fact that the minister of defense is engaged <laughs> in a in a tit for tat with an activist, so it tells me that the regime is shaken. Uh, I mean, look at the guy saying, apparently, I'm the most dangerous person. I'm I'm using a strategy. I'm I'm so I'm destroying Swapo. So like, hold me. I'm capable of destroying Swapo. I right. mean, a 33 year old. How can a 60 year old man, Vilho? Uh, go publicly and say that a 33 year old can you listen to this uh, kevin this is a 60 year old pensioner who is saying that a ruling party a liberation movement is being destroyed by a 33 year old remember that when muammar Gaddafi came to the helm as the leader of libya he was just 27 and he was in the army i'm not right. in the army i'm right. i'm in the street <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> that's the conversation that we're having right here with his worship the mayor for the city of Vendok, job Panda, trying to demystify his office and his person and also getting into some of his very sensitive aspects of uh, what he thinks feel free to give us a call so that we can continue with this conversation do you think that the mayor can deliver looking at uh, the diplomatic or the political entanglement that the ar is having with IPC at the seat of Windhoek right now. Thank you so much, Isoshi. Yeah, but Kevin, also, you, you asked, uh, you wanted to see a distinction because remember, I've already informed you that my content and character will not change. Right. But but I want us to be able to make a distinction that my my Instagram page have 120,000 followers. Right. My Twitter page have 59,000 followers. My Facebook page have 140,000 followers. Must I abandon them because I'm mayor? Right. Absolutely not. The city of Windhoek have official platforms. The the city of Windhoek have official platform that are there. And when we release, for example, when we deliver the Christmas, uh, what is it? The 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 when we delivered the the tenth of uh, December message. The tenth of December message was on the letterhead of the city. Uh, it was on the platform of the city. So the city does not upload my personal views about whatever it is that is going to i'm just a mayor tomorrow i'm not going to so if kevin i used to update you every day and then when i become a mayor i no longer update you because i need to succumb to to some sort of protocol that exists and then after a year when i'm no longer mayor i come to you hey, how are you going to feel you're going right. to say you abandoned me for a year all right i'm never going to abandon many young men and women some of them in the village you know that uh, as, at one point i was busy with my phd i couldn't update uh, and do anything uh, uh, because I was busy with my PhD and I found messages and some young people are saying, you never posted anything. What is going on? Right. Are you okay? So there are many young people who look for direction and wait for direction from me and I'm not going to stop. So there is no confusion whatsoever when I speak as mayor. So when I speak as mayor, it's going to be clearly articulated. Politically of course, correct. Of course, of course, uh, not necessarily politically <laughs> correct. I'm, I mean, uh, uh, the, but the nature of the position is that I'm I'm unable to. It's not like when you are a journalist, you are in studio and then you can go home. Right. You but you you may have 24 hours because you can be called uh, anytime, in, in, anytime to right. to to do whatever. So we will have to uh, to to <laughs> to tread very carefully in terms of that. But I think with the passage of time, uh, it it's going to emerge very clearly. Maybe, maybe perhaps uh, we are contemplating and thinking about creating platforms, even on social media. Uh, of the mayor and so that there's a distinct perhaps if on twitter there's no other uh, page of uh, mayor of the city of windhoek uh maybe that it might be of, of concern um, it's something that i'm thinking yes. all right fine that, that, that's uh, what the, his worship is thinking there but thank you so much his worship for really for the time that you gave us that's his worship dr job and panda right here in the studio with us Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. I, w I w just want to invite you and the listeners that uh, there is going to be indeed a, a mayoral annual address uh, that is going to take place on Monday at 10 o'clock. The details will be on the City of Windhoek uh, uh, social media pages so that we, we you are able to see a direction on what is going to, to happen. So uh, we just want to also send a message to residents and everybody else to be proud of being residents of Windhoek. The entire country the entire discourse, including ministers of defense, are talking about us, and and we must not uh, we must not allow this attention to go to Korihas, to go to other smaller towns. We are the big deal in the country. We are the capital city. The conversation about the direction of Namibia 
must be coming from window. So all the residents, I'm not saying you must be arrogant as my residents, but I just want you to hold your heads high and know that we are the one who determine sh that what should happen in, in, in the country, not out of arrogance. Of course, we, we do care about Rehoboth, we do care about Oshakati, we do care about Vaves, but we do care about Katima Muliro and all the places. But ag I, I'm, again, the firstborn carries a huge responsibility compared to the last born. I wish you all the best. If you don't hear from me, if you are unable to follow on Monday, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Take care of yourself. COVID-19 is quite serious. Let's take care of our families. Let's sanitize. Let's have our mask and defeat this uh, pandemic. Uh, we are in charge of Winduk and by extension, we are also in charge of the country. We are in charge and running the country together with President Gainkob. Uh, and it's a matter of time before he starts consulting with us. Uh, the future is going to be bright. As I always say, all of you are going to need sunglasses. Eagle Thanks. FM lets you express your constitutional rights of freedom of expression without fear of faith.